Let me tell you an amazing story that happened to me a short while ago. I get a phone call one night from a number that I don't recognize from the Chicago area, and at the other end is a Rabbi Shlomo Soroka, who's the head of a Goodest Israel in Illinois. And he said, is this Rabbi Landis? I said, yes. He said, Rabbi Landis, let me tell you a story. Do you recall a young man by the name of, and we'll change the name to protect the innocent, a young man by the name of Ari Smith? I said, yeah, sounds familiar. Let me tell you about Ari Smith. Ari Smith is part of this big political think tank here in Illinois, and he has literally bent over backwards to do whatever he can to help out a good Israel in Illinois. And one day I said to him, I said, Ari, I, I don't get it. Like, you know, Goodest Israel is an Orthodox lobbying group here in Illinois, and that's clearly not the community you affiliate with. Why is it that you always bend over backwards to do whatever possible to help us out? And Ari said, Rabbi Soroka, let me tell you a story. When I was in high school in Cincinnati, I went to the School for the Arts, and there was this rabbi who I had interacted with, who I had met, and he knew I was Jewish, but he knew that I was very different than him. He was an Orthodox rabbi, I was clearly not an Orthodox Jew. Yet, just because I was Jewish, and I had an interest in learning, he used to come and learn with me after high school on a regular basis. We'd meet in a coffee shop next to my school, we would do it once a week, once every other week, whatever it was. And I remember at that point looking at the situation and saying, he's an Orthodox rabbi, I'm this high school kid who's clearly not on the same path in life that he's on, yet still he takes time out of his schedule to come down here and learn with me on such a regular basis. And I said at that point, if this is what being an Orthodox Jew is all about, if this is how they look at Jews who aren't exactly like them, if this is how they perceive the Jewish people, then when I have the opportunity in my life, I'm going to do whatever I can to help out other traditional Jews. So Rabbi Soroka, when I met you and I became familiar with Agudas Israel of Illinois, I said, now's my opportunity to pay back Rabbi Landis for all that time that he spent learning with me. So whatever I can do to help out you and Agudas Israel, I am always here to do it. My friends, we can look at situations in life and we see a Jew, we see our children, we see people we come into contact with, people we come into contact with at work, people we come into contact with in the street, our neighbors, whatever it is, and we can look at them and say, this is a dead tree. There are no fruits, no, no flowers ever coming out of this one. And that is the lesson we should take from Tu B'Shvat, that every single Jew has within them that pentala yid, that little bit of sap that's just waiting to be heated up to be sent up through the trunk, out through the branches, to bear fruits and to bear flowers. So my friends, on this Tuba Shvat, let's all make a commitment to be able to get out there and find those seemingly dead trees, whether they are our children, the friends of our children, our neighbors, that person at work, whoever it is. And let's inspire the sap inside of them to eventually bear fruits and bear flowers 